Human Rights Council. There were some substantive issues from the COVID-19 pandemic, and one was the access to vaccines. This is a conversation that is happening everywhere in the world, whether within countries we have an equal access to vaccine by all communities, especially those which are most vulnerable. And secondly, are we having an equitable transfer of uh, vaccines amongst countries? So I think that conversation was really amplified this year. There was a resolution which was adopted by consensus, where, which was led by Ecuador, which really discussed access to vaccines and really discussed the need to have equity both within countries and amongst them. Lithuania for a video statement. There are many people in the world who believe that the only conversation you can have on climate change is in Bonn with the UNFCCC. And that is none of the business of the Human Rights Council to speak about uh, issues which are relevant to the environment. But increasingly, I think ma ma many more countries have recognized that climate change is a relevant discussion in every UN agency, in every institution. It's the business of everyone. And so we have seen proportionately with the increasing numbers of small states, in the council, we have seen an increased focus. This concern which is irrelevant and which makes it subject. One which recognized the, um, the right to a healthy, safe and sustainable environment. And the second was the creation of a mandate for climate change and human rights. And both are incredibly significant for the world. Of course, they're very important to small island states, particularly in the Pacific but they are significant for the whole world. And the fact that there was such an overwhelming level of support for both resolutions, I think really indicate an increasing consensus that this is an important conversation in the context of human rights. And this was the last speaker on my list. Often, when people speak at the council, the question should be, are they speaking at a level which makes decisions? Because often in organizations and institutions, you will find 50% and more representation of women, but they're often at the level where there's not, they're not really making the decisions. So the issue is, where is the leadership of women? I think this is the very important issue for the council. How many ambassadors in Geneva are women? We're still in the minority, although there's a very, very good network. I spoke a little earlier about the recognition of the right to a healthy environment. That did not start off as a consensus conversation, nor did the conversation on the creation of the mandate holder for climate change start off as a consensus conversation. But I think it was because there was a very inclusive conversation. There was a strong involvement by smaller states, uh, which are not connected to you know, any kind of big power brokers, um, and which really insisted on having this conversation that changed the nature of the discourse in the council. It is so decided. But the International Criminal Court is not just a court, it's also an international institution, and it's also a multilateral body. And I believe that, uh, in fact, this particular step that I take now is a logical conclusion of the way that my career path uh, has developed uh, for, the, for, for, for my life. So I think um, that it is going to be an extremely challenging experience, but it is one uh, for which I believe my career has prepared me for. I look forward to it. As to what areas of work I'll be covering, that is, of course, entirely the discretion of the chief prosecutor, and I don't know that yet. I, I'm assuming that in the next few months uh, it'll become clearer. Madam President, 